welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's video, we've got this lovely Bottonier Targa. Bit different, we've got outboards on this boat, which you may have not seen before, but she's a great example of what is a very, very capable boat. In today's video, we're gonna give you a full walk around the boat, show you all the features, show you how practical this boat is, and try and point out to you just how great the build quality is. So we've got some great drone footage for you of the boat on the beautiful River Dart here. So keep watching and we'll show you through this boat. Okay, right, switch to the GoPro and we're gonna have a full look around this boat. Now, I met with the owner the other week and he's an experienced boater who brought this a couple of years ago. Um, she's a 2018 Botany Targa 25.1 GT. Now these are renowned for being extremely good sea boats being well built, Scandinavian heritage. And looking around the boat, you can see why. There's lots of features on board this boat that if you know what you're looking for, the signs of quality, the signs of practicality, and there's an awful lot of, like I say, practical storage solutions, etc., throughout the boat. Now, I think the best thing to do is start up here at the, um, at the bow area of the boat. So this client had a windlass, electric windlass fitted. So you've got electric windlass on board this boat, which is a chain and rope um, system. And you can see here the pulpit rails were also slightly amended to allow to gain easy access to the to the anchor itself you've got really chunky cleats both port and starboard and you've actually got your full filler port side on here as well now underneath these seats here i'm just sort of skirting around the table you've got this really nice teak table which is removable in the bow area so you can see we put this up here this morning for our photos there are cushions which go in this area which the owner's got at his house um, so you can imagine this is a really nice practical um, eating area. It feels stable. I feel well protected with these uh, rails here. I've also got high, high side decks there as well. Underneath these seats themselves, I've got a couple of fist systems. So I've got the gas bottle storage here. I've got a hose stored there. There is a deck water, freshwater flush connection just down there. So that's what that hose is for. If I just come back around now, I'll just show you in this starboard locker what we've got here. We've got some storage. You can see some of the owner's cleaning gear in there. And then in this front locker, like in all three, because you might wonder what's in here. We've got, again, a bit more storage and some of the owner's personal cleaning belongings. So very sensible storage. You might spot here a door. Now, this is very similar to what you might have seen in some of our other videos on Axe Par 28. So you undo these catches here, and all of a sudden, if I just close the leaf on that table there, you've got access to the heads. And very similar to an Axe 28, so you step down in here, you've got these Teak and Holly steps going into here, and then you've got a manual flush, seawater flush toilet. You've also got a shower in here, you've got an LED light up there, some storage actually behind the sink itself. There's a shower um, head there as well. You'll spot there's a heating outlet, so the boat does have heating. Practicality, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you've got direct access there to the back of the helm. A lot of equipment on board this boat. There's a huge amount of gear on board here, a lot of electronics, so we'll look at that in a minute. But yeah, that's a nice, sensible access to the heads there with some really se serious sort of clips on there. So I'll get Nathan to help me put those back in a minute. Looking further off now, you've got a slight inverse here to the windscreen. So you've got, we've just moved this boat up the River Dart. We're up at Dittisham. So one of my favourite places on the planet, Dittisham, on the River Dart, or Ditsum, depending on how you pronounce it. You've got the, uh, uh, the actual village over there. But you can see here, we've got great visibility for that huge single piece windscreen. We've got the stainless steel wiper arms there. Now, you've got really easy access walking around this boat. So as I mentioned, you've got full walk around deck. You can see your scuppers down here. So designed to really get rid of any water that does come overboard. As soon as you get to a sort of a midships, you've got this teak rail here, which follows you aft. Um, and it's easy then just to guide yourself up here using that rail. Sideboard access or sideboarding access is access through this lift up section here. So that lifts up, so it's very easy. This is on a pontoon berth. So we've come and picked up a mooring here on the dart for the video purpose, but the boat is actually kept on a mooring on the river dart. So she's at Dart Marina. In the aft cockpit area or the aft deck area of this boat, um, you are more seating. So we've got this large bench seat here, which can actually go up and down. And you've got two port holes there letting natural light back into the um, accommodation space. We'll look at that shortly. There's a sliding window here at the aft of the cabin or cockpit area, cabin area. And again, this is a really nice place to sit here. I and mean, look at this, and there's not many people that have got that view this morning. A couple of other yachts up here, but not many. But this aft deck space is very practical. You've got twin gates access coming in here. So these are operated via these chute bolts. Try and do it one-handed. And then if I open that one side on the port side, I can easily then walk down onto the platform. I'm just going to interrupt my walkthrough just to give you a little bit more information on these 
stern thruster system. So you can see here they're mounted on top of board, the ride plates on the outboards, both port and starboard. One giving you propulsion in one direction and the other giving you propulsion in the other direction. And I have to say, having just berthed a boat on a home mooring, they are very, very good indeed. And I would say you must try this. Now this boat's fitted with twin Mercury 200 horsepower engines, fully up to service. They're looked after by Tonto Marine. Uh, Tonto, as you know, Christian looks after a number of our axopars. They do a great job. If I just pan the camera around a slightly different angle now in that half cockpit. So if it was my boat, I'd probably think you could easily get a couple of director's chairs there. Obviously you have got that integral seat there, but a couple of director's chairs there. Watching the world go by, what better places to be um, it really is a stunning spot. So very easy to operate these engines. You might spot down there, this boat has actually got a stern thruster. Now whether you can spot down there, so she's got stern thruster on the, actually mounted on top of the, the um, planing plate on board the outboards. So this has got a bow and stern thruster. We'll go to the helm shortly and have a look at that. The other area I just want to show you here, Nathan, would you mind just come to give me a hand opening this half deck space? There's a huge locker underneath here. Um, again, it's a single-handed. Not so easy. Now we've put in here the fenders today. You can see you've got this service space inside here and this is where you start to really see some of the quality on board this boat. You've got the hot water system mounted down here. You've got obviously all the cabling there running out towards the outboards. You've got the trim pump for the trim tabs. You've got the hydraulic, electric hydraulic steering pump there for the outboards. Um, some fuses there, some, that's for your shore power side of RCDs tripping in and out. And then you've got your engine isolators here. So you've got remote isolators up on the dash um, but that's actually your battery connections there. But this is a really practical space. This down here, if anyone's wondering what that, that is, that's the diesel tank for the Eberspacher. So she's got Eberspacher heating, but obviously petrol boat. So in order to run the diesel heating, you need a diesel tank. So that's what that is down there. So that's a really practical space. You can see we've just put the fenders in there this morning. But if you are going away on the boat and you have paddle boards or electric bikes or inflatables for the children, grandchildren, whatever it might be, it's got plenty of storage in there. There is some storage in here as well. Nathan, was that where you found the table? Yeah. In there. So the table that you saw on the bow actually slides in this receiver here. So when you're not using that, it's completely out of the way. But you can see you've got some fairly juicy gas rams there. And you can hear the waterproof seal as we lock those down. And this is a lockable space. So if you are going to use the mooring on a, on a swinging mooring, then you've got access to um, the ability to lock things in there. Port and starboard, you've got these little lockers here. So we've got a couple of lines in here. And then you've got some more mooring cleats so you can see. Now, sorry, I'm taking up a long time just looking around the outside of this boat, but there's a lot to talk about. I am going to jump into the cabin in a minute and show you what we've got in there. Before I do, let's just quickly look up on top of the cabin itself. So you can see you've got Simrad radar. You've got a stern facing Ray Marine camera, which is just is obviously linked back to the plotters. You've got twin whip aerials, got AAS on board this boat as well. And then slightly further forward here, you can see the air horn. You've got a light bar and a spotlight which you can operate from inside the helm. So let's jump inside the cabin now and let's go and have a look see what we find in there. First things first, let's talk about the helm area. So to gain access to the helm, I've got sliding doors, both port and starboard. These are nicely weighted, they feel solid. You've got some nice grab handles as you come in. You've got one here, and then this is all beautifully sort of finished with um, the wood all the way around the door. The helm itself, as I said, you've got a lot of equipment on board this boat. You've got down here, you've got autopilot, you've got active trim for the engines, which um, trims the outboards depending on the speed which is so you don't have to do it yourself. You've got the uh, bow and stern thrusters which I mentioned. Um, I used those when we left the berth, really easy to use, great system. You've got your window wiper controls down here and then you've got your um, up and down for your trim tabs and you've got indicators on these as well which is really nice. And you've actually got a couple of presets here because they're all down or all up and some nice features on board there. The electric windlass you can control from here and there is a remote control as well for that which is up here. Um, but they, there is a, a, a fix switch here. The throttles themselves are nicely positioned for the helmsman, uh, starboard side of the wheel there. Now, interestingly, on these bottom air targets, they actually can move this whole helm assembly up or down. So I, if I want to sit down I can, on the helm seat here, which is very comfortable, I can have that in the lower position, so I've got easy access. And when I move that uh, lever, the whole helm moves. So all of these gears, all of these switches here move as well, not just the wheel. But if I want to stand up and operate the boat, then I can push that all the way up. And you can see there, that's now its upright position. And I've got the wheel sort of almost at chest height and that makes it super easy to manoeuvre. You can see ahead of me here, I've got a nice Simrad screen. I'm just going to tilt that back down again so you can see that. I've got a nice Simrad Evo screen, super easy to use. You see this on lots of the boats we video. 
Um, one of my favorites, you've got the Mercury feature here on board here, but you do also have the vessel view. So if I just put the ignition in for a second, excuse the beeping, um, you do also have the vessel Mercury vessel view. So that's a designated screen there for the engines. But if you want to actually see the engine data on the main screen, then you can. Now, realistically, you're probably going to have, say, chartography on this screen or radar, and then you're going to have engine data on that one. Whilst I'm up here, let's look at what else we've got. We've got the Simrad DSC radio, which I've turned off just so it doesn't bother us whilst we're doing the video. Um, we've got a lean gauge here, level gauge here. So hopefully we're dead level at the moment on the dart. I'd be a bit worried if we're not. Fusion stereo, what you'd expect to see. And then you can see your battery condition, uh, fresh water tank level here. Got ventilation control up there on the, on the uh, top of the cabin there. And then that's for spotlight control, which, which I mentioned earlier on. Remote battery switches, nice to see here. So you've got remote battery switches. Um, so that saves you having to sort of crawl on your hands and knees to turn the battery isolators on. And these again are nicely labeled. So you've got port engine, starboard engine, service and bow thruster. So all nicely labeled. And then you can see the CE plate here from Botnia um, stating number of persons eight and uh, et cetera, et cetera on there. So all really nicely laid out. As well as being a uh, sort of navigation area, the helm on this boat is also your galley. So you can see underneath here, we've got a full galley arrangement. So we've got a twin burner gas hob there. You saw the gas bottle earlier on in the video. And then you can see you've got your hot and cold water tap there as well. All really nicely made. It's a real solid feel to everything as you pick it up. It's all really solid quality. Little storage cubby hole there. We all need one of those on a boat. And then underneath here, you've got lots of bits and pieces or storage here. And all these drawers feel really nicely made as well. A couple of grab handles at the helm. We're on the dart here today, as I keep mentioning, so we don't really don't have too much uh, to hang on to, to worry about hanging on, um, but it's nice to have these to here to hand. So you've got twin seats arrangement, you've got a port seat for your co-pilot, and then you've got your starboard helm seat. Um, a bit more storage just under there as well. So what we'll do now is we'll start looking at the after the uh, cabin space. I had to pause the video there because we, as always, had to bring quite a lot of safety kit with us. So we'd actually position the safety kit um, here in the aft of the cabin for a moment. So you can see, as I mentioned, we've got both port and starboard uh, seats there facing forward. And then you've got three individual seats acting almost as a bench seat um, across the back of the cabin space. That rear stern window there, which I mentioned, looking out onto the aft deck. And if you are sort of entertaining, then you could open that window there and allow you to talk to your guests further aft. You might spot up here, what have we got going on up here? Now, this is a, a bit of a feature you see on bottom of yours. So this table here, you undo the clamp and the table actually comes down. So what that does is then that, that acts as a, an area to have your lunch. You can obviously then turn it or clamp it off there. That acts as a table then for lunch or coffee, or even if you wanted to do a bit of additional chart work, whatever it might be. But that's a really, again, just a really simple idea. You've got another feature there to hold on to if you need to, but it's a really clever idea and I, and I quite like that. And you do see that on, um, on Botnia's. Underneath the co-pilot seat here, we've got a, sink, um, a fridge, which is all nice and clean on vent. You might spot here, we've got the teak and holly floor. We do have a carpet overlay. Now that actually extends that teak and holly floor all the way forward in the cabin space but it's being protected by that carpet overlay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift that table back up uh, with the assistance of Nathan because I'm one-handed and then we'll go and look it down there and you might spot you've got some accommodation so let's go and see what's down there. Right we've got the table uh, we've put the table back up in the air now using the clamp as I mentioned we've lifted that rear seat base which is very similar to other boats we've videoed before moved this little panel here which is actually quite heavy and then you've got access down a couple of steps here into the accommodation area. So what we've got on board here, we've got two single berths. Now these single berths might look small, but they do go an awful long way down there. So you could be extremely tall and still stay on board here. Nice soft mattresses. You've got a porthole there looking out, which is nicely done. You've got some storage here as well. So if you are staying on board, you've got an area to keep your gear. And then you'll spot down here, you've got a couple of sockets as well. So you've got a USB socket here. And then you've got a three pin socket up here. And then you've got an Eversparker controller down here. Nathan, is there an Eversparker controller up there as well? Just not, is it just this one? Just, just this one here. Um, you can see here, so that's the port side of the boat now. So you've got a mirrored berth that side, again with the porthole. You've got a couple of reading lights down here. Um, and then in here itself, you've got a bit more storage. Now we've just put the owner's heater in there whilst we're doing the video. Um, but you'd be surprised at how comfortable this space is. And I can still just stand up in this area here as you're entering into the berth area. I can still stand up. So whether you're going to sleep on board or just use this area's storage for gear, it's really nicely done. And uh, as with the rest of the boat, it's all done to a good quality. Let's see what's in here. Again, more storage, even more storage in there. So yeah, it's really surprising on board this boat, just how practical it is for a 25 foot boat. 
we're heading back up now to the home berth for this boat. Amazing views here this afternoon. There was very little wind. We've got some beautiful tumbling views here, I'm sure you'll agree. But as you can see here, I'm tucked here. I've got this great, as I mentioned already, this door here. I've got great visibility forward. There is a bit of a chill in the air, but Nathan and I are in here perfectly warm. We don't have the heating on, but if we wanted to put the heating on, then we could. But it just goes to show you just how practical and usable this boat is. You, know, you could easily operate this boat pretty much all season, I think, if you wanted to, with the facilities on board this boat. So, as I mentioned earlier on, if you have enjoyed this video, you'd like to see more, please do leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, and best of all, subscribe, because we want to keep bringing you lots of exciting content, and we've got lots of ideas going forward. So, as I said, details for this boat are in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll head on up the river now.